The FARs apply to everyone in the flying environment, from the captain of the largest airliner to the newest student pilot. In many ways, they are comparable to the motor vehicle code of the state and local government. They are the pilot's rules of the road. This program and the next two programs present the FARs pertinent to the student and private pilot. There are 11 volumes of FARs, but you will study only those relevant to student and private pilot certification and operations. The regulations you will need are selected from portions of part one, which covers general definitions, one which covers certification of pilots and flight instructors, part 91, which deals with general flight rules, and Part 830 is the National Transportation Safety Board rules pertaining to the reporting of aircraft accidents or incidents. Your textbook and these three programs cover the regulations you must know, but many private pilots find it interesting to read the complete versions of these parts of the regulations. Many of the terms in Part 1 have been discussed in the course already, and many more apply to and amplify the rules and regulations. For that reason, we encourage you to familiarize yourself with the definitions in FAR Part 1 that are important to student and private pilots alike. While we are only highlighting certain sections of Part 1, it is important to review your text for all the definitions contained there. Administrator means the Federal Aviation Administrator or any person to whom he's delegated his authority in the matter concerned. Airport traffic was covered in the airports, airspace, and local flying segments. And is that airspace within a horizontal radius of five statute miles from the geographic center of any airport at which a control tower is operating, extending from the surface up to, but not including an altitude of 3,000 feet above the elevation of the airport. Air traffic clearance means an authorization by air traffic control for the purpose of preventing collision between known aircraft or for an aircraft to proceed under specified traffic conditions within controlled airspace. You will often hear the words category and class used in discussion about both pilots and airplanes. The word category is with respect to certification, ratings, privileges, and limitations of airmen, means a broad classification of aircraft. Examples include airplane, rotorcraft, glider, and lighter than air. When used with respect to certification of aircraft, means a grouping of aircraft based upon intended use or operating limitations. Examples include transport, normal, utility, acrobatic, limited, restricted, and provisional. The word class, when used with respect to certification, ratings, privileges, and limitations of airmen, means a classification of aircraft within a category having similar operating characteristics. Examples include single engine, multi-engine, land, water, gyroplane, helicopter, airship, and free air balloon. When used with respect to certification of aircraft, class means a broad grouping of aircraft having similar characteristics of propulsion, flight, or landing. Examples include airplane, rotorcraft, glider, balloon, land plane, and seaplane. Controlled airspace is another familiar term whose official definition is that airspace designated as continental control area, control area, control zone, terminal control area, or transition area within which some or all aircraft may be subject to air traffic control. IFR conditions, of course, are weather conditions below the minimum for flight under visual flight rules. Aircraft means aircraft of more than 12,500 pounds, maximum certificated takeoff weight. Night 
means the time between the end of evening civil twilight and the beginning of morning civil twilight, as published in the American Air Almanac, converted to local time. A rating is a statement that is part of your pilot's certificate and sets forth special conditions, privileges, or limitations. One rating you've already heard about is that of an instrument rating, which may be added to either a private or commercial pilot certificate. Small aircraft means aircraft of 12,500 pounds or less, maximum certificated takeoff weight. The word type as used in relation to certification, ratings, privileges, and limitations of airmen, means a specific make and model of aircraft, including modifications that do not change its handling or flight characteristics, and is often misused or misunderstood. Examples include DC-7, 1049, and F-27. A type rating is required to act as pilot in command of any large aircraft. As used with respect to certification of aircraft, this means those aircraft which are similar in design. Examples include DC-7 and DC-7C, 1049G and 1049H, and F-27 and F-27F. The certification of aircraft engines means those engines which are similar in design. For example, JT-8D and JT-8D-7 are engines of the same type, and JT-9D-3A and JT-9D are engines of the same type. The aviation language is full of abbreviations and symbols, most of which can be found in FAR Part 1.2. Qualifications for pilots and the rules governing their certification, both initial and progressive, are covered in Part 61. It contains requirements for medical certificates, pilot logbooks, procedures for written and flight examinations, and such matters as how to keep the FAA notified of any change in your name, address, or loss of your aviation records. Here are the official words. Part 61, paragraph 1, applicability. This part prescribes the requirements for issuing pilot and flight instructor certificates and ratings the conditions under which those certificates and ratings are necessary, and the privileges and limitations of those certificates and ratings. Part 61.3, Requirements for Certificate Rating and Authorization. Pilot Certificate. No person may act as pilot in command or in any other capacity as a required pilot flight crew member of a civil aircraft of United States registry unless he has in his personal possession a current pilot certificate issued to him under this part. Medical certificate. No person may act as pilot in command or in any other capacity as a required flight crew member of an aircraft under a certificate issued to him under this part unless he has in his personal possession an appropriate current medical certificate issued under part 67 of this chapter. It's not enough to be a pilot and have a medical certificate you must carry both certificates with you whenever you are the pilot in command. Instrument rating. No person may act as pilot in command of a civil aircraft under instrument flight rules or in weather conditions less than the minimum prescribed for VFR flight unless, in the case of an airplane, he holds an instrument rating or an airline transport pilot certificate with an airplane category rating on it. Concerning inspection of certificate, each person who holds a pilot certificate, flight instructor certificate, medical certificate, authorization, or license required by this part shall present it for inspection upon request of the administrator, an authorized representative of the National Transportation Safety Board, or any federal, state, or local law enforcement officer. Part 61.15 deals with offenses involving narcotic drugs, marijuana, depressants or stimulant drugs or other substances. No person who is convicted of violating any federal or state statute relating to the growing, processing, manufacture, sale, didn't possession, transportation or importation of narcotic drugs, marijuana and depressants or stimulant drugs or substances 
is eligible for any certificate or rating issued under this part for a period of one year after the date of final conviction. A temporary pilot or flight instructor certificate or a rating effective for a period of not more than 120 days is issued to a qualified applicant pending a review of his qualifications and the issuance of a permanent certificate or rating by the administrator. The permanent certificate or rating is issued to an applicant found qualified and a denial thereof is issued to an applicant found not qualified. A temporary certificate issued under paragraph A of this section expires at the end of the expiration date stated or upon receipt by the applicant of the certificate or rating sought or notice that the certificate or rating died. Part 61.19 deals with duration of pilot and flight instructor certificates. The holder of a certificate with an expiration date may not after that date exercise the privileges of that certificate. Student pilot certificate. A student pilot certificate expires at the end of the 24th month after the month in which it is issued. Other pilot certificates. Any pilot certificate issued under this part is issued without a specific expiration date. Surrender, suspension, or revocation. Any pilot certificate or flight instructor certificate issued under this part ceases to be effective if it is surrendered, suspended, or revoked. Return of certificate. The holder of any certificate issued under this part that is suspended or revoked shall the administrator's request return it to the administrator. Part 61.23 concerns duration of medical certificates. A first class medical certificate expires at the end of the last day of the sixth month after the month of the date of the examination shown on the certificate for operations requiring an airline transport pilot certificate. The twelfth month after the date of the examination shown on the certificate for operations requiring only a commercial pilot certificate. And the twenty-fourth month after the month of the date of the examination shown on the certificate for operations requiring only a private or student pilot certificate. A second class medical certificate expires at the end of the last day of the twelfth month after the month of the date of examination shown on the certificate for operations requiring a commercial pilot certificate and the twenty-fourth month after the month of the day of the examination shown on the certificate for operations requiring only a private or student pilot certificate. A third class medical certificate expires at the end of the last day of the twenty-fourth month after the month of the date of the examination shown on the certificate for operations requiring a private or student pilot certificate. This means that no matter which class of medical exam you request from the flight surgeon, it will be valid for student and private pilot operations for about two years. Part 61.25 covers change of name. An application for the change of a name on a certificate issued under this part must be accompanied by the applicant's current certificate and a copy of the marriage license, court order, or other document verifying the change. The documents are returned to the applicant after inspection. 61.27 concerns voluntary surrender or exchange of certificate. 61.29 discusses replacement or destroyed certificate. An applicant for replacement of a lost or destroyed certificate issued under this part may be made by writing to the Department of Transportation, Federal Aviation Administration, Airman Certification Branch, Post Office Box 25082, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, zip 73125. An application for the replacement of a lost or destroyed medical certificate is made by letter to the Department of Transportation, Federal Aviation Administration, Aero Medical Certification Branch, Post Office Box 25082, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, zip 73125. It's accompanied by a check or money order for $2. A person who has lost a certificate issued under this part, or a medical certificate issued under Part 67 of this chapter, or both, may obtain a telegram from the FAA confirming that it was issued. The telegram may be a certificate for a period not to exceed 60 days pending his receipt of a duplicate certificate under either paragraph of this section. If you lose either certificate and plan to continue flying, 
you will want to use the telegram method, since without both your certificates, you're not allowed to act as pilot in command. Part 61.31 refers to general limitations. Under the heading of type ratings required, a person may not act as pilot in command of any of the following aircraft unless he holds a type rating for that aircraft. A large aircraft, a helicopter for operations requiring an airline transport pilot certificate, a turbojet powered airplane, an aircraft specified by the administrator through aircraft type certificate procedures. Some of these are 707s, DC-10s, and L-1011s. With reference to high performance airplane, a person holding a private or commercial certificate may not act as pilot in command of an airplane that has more than 200 horsepower or that has a retractable landing gear, flaps, and controllable propeller unless he's received flight instruction from an authorized flight instructor who's certified in his logbook that he's competent to pilot such an airplane. The regulations call them all high-performance airplanes, but you will often hear the term complex airplane used to describe airplanes with flaps, retractable landing gear, and controllable propellers. Part 61.35 concerns the written flight test, prerequisites, and passing grades. An applicant for a written test must show that he has satisfactorily completed the ground instruction or home study course required by this part for the certificate or rating sought. This will be either a graduation certificate or an endorsement in your logbook. Also, present as personal identification an airman's driver's license or other official document, and present a birth certificate or other official document showing that he meets the age requirement prescribed in this part for the certificate sought not later than two years from the date of application for the test. The minimum passing grade is specified by the administrator on each written test sheet or booklet furnished to the applicant. Part 61.37, also about written tests, deals with cheating or other unauthorized conduct. You should read this section for details. But paragraph A states that you may not cheat or help anyone else to cheat on any written test. Paragraph B tells you what happens if you are caught cheating. No person whom the administrator finds to have committed an act prohibited by paragraph A of this section is eligible for any airman or ground instructor certificate or rating or to take part in any test for a period of one year after that act. In addition, the commission of that act is a basis for suspending or revoking any airman or ground instructor certificate or rating held by that person. The FAA clearly takes its written tests very seriously. Concerning Part 61.39, which deals with prerequisites for flight tests, to be eligible for a flight test for a certificate or an aircraft or instrument rating issued under this part, the applicant must, one, have passed any required written test since the beginning of the 24th month before the month in which he takes the flight test, have the applicable instruction and aeronautical experience prescribed in this part, hold a current medical certificate appropriate to the certificate he seeks, meet the age requirement for the issuance of the certificate or rating he seeks, and have a written statement from an appropriately certified flight instructor certifying that he has given the applicant flight instruction in preparation for the flight test within 60 days preceding the date of application and found him competent to pass the test and to have satisfactory knowledge of the subject areas in which he was shown to be deficient on his FAA airman written test report. Part 61.43 covers aspects of the flight test. It should be read prior to taking your flight examination. A pilot must execute procedures and maneuvers within the airplane's capabilities and limitations. This means that you must observe all the airplane's limitations regardless of what the examiner might ask. Executing appropriate emergency procedures, smooth and accurate piloting, applying your knowledge, and last, showing that you are the master of the airplane with a successful outcome of any maneuver never seriously in doubt. 61.51 covers pilot logbooks and is a very deep regulation. It is important to know exactly what must be in your logbook because it is your only legal proof that you have acquired the required training and experience to act as pilot in command. 
The aeronautical training and experience used to meet the requirements for the certificate or rating or the recent flight experience requirements of this part must be shown by a reliable record. The logging of other flight time is not required. Each pilot shall enter the following information for each flight or lesson logged. Date, total flight time, place or points of departure and arrival, type and identification of aircraft, type of pilot experience or training, pilot in command or solo, flight instruction received from an authorized flight instructor, instrument flight instruction from an authorized flight instructor. Condition, day or night, simulated instrument conditions, logging of pilot time, solo flight time, a pilot may log as solo flight time, only that flight time which he is the sole occupant of the aircraft. Pilot in command flight time. A private or commercial pilot may log as pilot in command time, that flight time during which he is the sole manipulator of the controls for the aircraft for which he is rated, or when he is the sole occupant of the aircraft. Presentation of logbook. Pilot must present his logbook for inspection upon reasonable request by the administrator, an authorized representative of the National Transportation Safety Board, or any state or local law enforcement officer. A student pilot must carry a logbook on all solo cross-country flights as evidence of the required instructors and endorsements. Part 61.53, Operation During Medical Deficiency. No person may act as pilot in command or in any other capacity as a required pilot flight crew member while he has a known medical deficiency or increase of a known medical deficiency that would make him unable to meet the requirements of his current medical certificate. 61.57 lists the recent flight experience necessary to act as pilot in command. This is another detailed regulation that you need to know thoroughly. All this experience must be recorded in your logbook or you are as illegal as if you did not have it at all. The regulation pertaining to the biannual flight review states that no person may act as pilot in command of an aircraft unless, within the preceding 24 months, he has accomplished a flight review given to him in an aircraft for which he is rated by an appropriately certified flight instructor or other person designated by the administrator, and had his logbook endorsed by the person who gave him the review certifying that he has satisfactorily accomplished the flight review. However, a person who has, within the preceding 24 months, satisfactorily completed a pilot proficiency check conducted by an FAA or an approved pilot check airman for a pilot certificate, rating, or operating privilege need not accomplish the flight review required by this section. The meaning of flight review, as used in this section, consists of a review of the current general operating and flight rules of Part 91 of this chapter, and a review of those maneuvers and procedures which in the discretion of the person giving the review are necessary for the pilot to demonstrate that he can safely exercise the privileges of his pilot certificate. Concerning general experience, no person may act as pilot in command of an aircraft passengers unless within the preceding 90 days he has made three takeoffs and three landings as the sole manipulator of the flight controls in an aircraft of the same category and class. If the aircraft is a tailwheel airplane, the landings must have been made to a full stop in a tailwheel airplane. For night experience, no person may act as pilot in command of an aircraft carrying passengers during the period beginning one hour after sunset and ending one hour before sunrise unless within the preceding 90 days he has made at least three takeoffs and three landings to a full stop during that period in the category and class of aircraft to be used. Part 61.59 concerns falsification, reproduction or alteration of applications, certificates, logbooks, reports, or records. This should be read for the details of all things which you are not allowed to do. The commission by any person of an act prohibited under paragraph A of it is a basis for suspending or revoking any airman or ground instructor certificate or rating held by that person. Part 6160 deals with change of address. 
The holder of a pilot or flight instructor certificate who has made a change in his permanent mailing address may not after 30 days from the date he moved exercise the privileges of a certificate unless he's notified in writing the Department of Transportation, Federal Aviation Administration Airman Certification Branch, Box 25082, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Zip 73125. The implications of this rule are a little surprising. If you move and don't notify the FAA of your new address after 30 days, you may not act as pilot in command. It is just as illegal as if you never had a certificate and is similar to having no record of your recent flight experience. In this program, we covered part one and much of part six federal aviation regulations. There are two more subparts to part 61 relating to student and private pilots, which we'll cover in the next program. We'll also discuss part 91 and part 830 of these very important regulations, which are essential for safe and legal flying. Last time, we began our discussion of the Federal Aviation Regulations. Don talked about Part 1, which covers general definitions, and started Part 61, which deals with certification of pilots and flight instructors. By now, I'm sure you realize the importance of these regulations and how they help to ensure safe and efficient flight. Today, I'll continue with Subpart C of Part 61, about becoming a student pilot and the privileges and limitations that go with this certificate.